You're watching All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Virgin Bet. Hello and welcome to All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Virgin Bet. As ever, you're with me, Steve Sidwell, and of course, Wayne Bridge. And again, join us, we have a very special guest. Uh, one of the Premier League's most colossal <laughs> centre-backs. Uh, he's a former Blackburn Rovers captain, played in France, Germany, Russia and Greece. And a man who's got an amazing story that deserves to be told in terms of his journey to being a footballer and grace in the Premier League. It's a pleasure to welcome to the show, Chris Samba. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks. Just quickly, we've just uh, we just met outside, but you're just recovering after a neck operation. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, fusion, disfusion. Yeah. You know, too much heading. Too much heading. And is that is that down to a certain manager or, or uh, oh, a certain no, individual? No. I, I've, done, I've done a little bit. I'm not gonna give names. You know, I, yeah. I enjoy doing it. You know, yeah. if you see, I had most of my goals doing that. So I'm not gonna complain. But all f all fine and healing well, yeah. Hopefully, Good. <laughs> hopefully that's it. You know. Well, you still had to duck when you walked through the uh, the door frame, so you've not lost any height. That's for sure. Um, Chris, look, let's start from the beginning. Um, it's not just an amazing journey in terms of getting to the Premier League and playing the Premier League, but your whole process of, of being a, a professional football player and, and, and your journey, because it was very difficult, wasn't it? I mean, you, uh, you left home at 15, had trials at many clubs. Tell us, tell us how you got into football. It's going to be a long day. Huh? You know? <laughs> I don't know, you have only one hour, one hour only. That, that's yeah. going to be a long one, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean... Uh, you know, it was, it was, uh, how it started, I've started playing at nine years, like six years old yeah. in the street and everything, you know. Obviously, um, uh, my mom passed away when I was just seven years old. So it was uh, me, my, my dad, and then step stepmom uh, at home. So it's just playing football and enjoying it. Every time been my dream since, since, since a kid. Yeah. Um, going along play at the village <laughs> the local team and, and everything and growing up changing town arriving at at, at uh, 15 years old you know i i just decided uh, you know what uh, at home it was not the greatest you know, and the, where, the where greatest. was home yes. home was uh, in france it yeah. was it was in uh, in uh, normandy in yes. normandy yeah, yeah so it was not the most easiest at home and yeah. everything. So uh, one day I just decided to pack my bag, jump by the window and, and go to the adventure. Wow. Where did <laughs> oh you go God. first? Well, I go first. I went to, to Rouen, uh, yeah. who was uh, the football club uh, where I was playing at the time, uh, around the 15 years old. Did they, um, did they want you to be there or, did, or, or was they quite neglected to you, for you? They, did they not give you the sort of the opportunity that you were sort of seeking? In fact, what I was doing is I uh, was uh, going to, to the school, uh, was just the college was probably five minutes from there where I was going. Yeah. So after college, I would go to, to, to football. After football, I would be pretending I was going home, but I was not going home. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I had to find somewhere to sleep and, yeah. and you know, and, and go along with whatever was good at the time, sometime. You know, the stand, sometime I stay and sleep in uh, where, at, either at the digs, uh, where other players And was, how, was yeah, how difficult was that at, at, at that age? Because it's, you know, you've moved away, you've, you've done it because you wanted to chase your dream. It was, was you just very tunnel visioned in terms of like, this, this is my journey and I, and I have to be a, a footballer and be away from your family? I was absolutely tunnel vision. It was absolutely tunnel vision for me. It was like, that's what I want to do. And, but nothing else, and yeah. I, I need to find a way to make this happen. Yeah, you know. So, any way was okay for me. At yeah. least if I could be on the pitch, you know, it was it was good for me. Yeah, it was good for me. Yeah. Look, before we carry on, um, I think the dentist next door has left the window open because <laughs> the, uh, the drill was going. You might hear some screams later on. Um, you then got to move to Germany, is that right? Uh, with with Hertha, Hertha Berlin. It started uh, in France. It started uh, when I was uh, still doing uh, everything. You know, I've been sleeping like where I could sleep. Then I went and lived with my auntie. Right, it was not far from there, so I stayed here about a year uh, with with my auntie. Uh, and then I said to myself, you know what, I need to. To, to progress in what I'm doing. So yeah. I remember, oh, you know, a, a fresh game where I, I score 
two goals uh, as a number six against Sedan. So I decided I would take a bag, pack it, and, and go in the east and, and go there and say, wow. yeah, I am going to have a trap. Were you, were you working or doing school at the same time? Or was oh. it literally you're doing a bit of everything and football? No, I was, I was at school. And then I decided, you know, like here, you want to go in the academy to progress or something. So I decided, you know what, let me let me go there. Well, no money, jump in train and, and the whole process, yeah. you know, a three-hour train. So um, I arrived there, met uh, the, the director of the academy and said, listen, you, I don't know if you remember me. We play. I saw you at the game uh, last time and uh, I want a trial. You know, <laughs> give me a trial. Wow. You know, let me show, show what I can do. He gave me, he gave me uh, two weeks yeah. where I did well. And from there, that's where it really started because he, they, they took me in and, you know, I could have a kind of a normal, a normal life from there, I would say. Uh, and was you always a centre-back from when you first played or was you trying different positions? No. And, or, and was you basically, was you the size, did you develop really early? And because yeah. obviously you've, you've, as I said before in the, in the uh, intro, I mean, you a, a colossal defender yeah. and... Was you small growing up? Or yeah, no, no, I was never small. No. <laughs> I was never small. I mean, it was uh, one year when I couldn't really play because I took about, I don't know, what is it in uh, in inches, but like oh, wow, 10, okay. 12 centimetres in a year. Wow. So weak knee. You know, yeah, yeah. used to call me as a Kenyan, Flamingo. <laughs> 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 you know, I was like this, you know, yeah. just, just long. Mm. And as surprising as it sounds, I was striker. <laughs> Oh, okay. I was a yeah. more offense, yeah. offense, yeah. you know, yeah. driven, you know. That's and, I started further up and yeah. went back. I wonder why that is. Just wasn't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Just, no, was, you know, I don't know, yeah. I was, because I started... Because actually Cole was the same, wasn't he? Cole yeah, he was a, a winger. Of a striker and a winger, then went, went mm. sort of back um, defending. For me, it was probably, I wasn't producing enough. I wasn't scoring enough. Um, I was okay at crossing, but I just wasn't scoring enough. Yeah. And then a game just changed me because I was left-sided. The full-backs were more like, get up and down. I was yeah. one of them midfielders or wingers that always helped out at the back, so yeah, I had the legs yeah. anyway. Yeah. So for me, it was different. Yeah. And I wasn't player. scoring and assisting enough, so that's yeah. probably why. Uh you obviously weren't scoring enough. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Me was, was different. Well, me yeah. was different reason. Me, uh, I couldn't run enough oh, right. you know, okay. I, I was I could be good for 45 yeah. minutes but you know I, at the enough. hour I start to uh, yeah. it's too much yeah. running you know, the channels and these and that the yeah. pressing I was like it's not for me you know so so <laughs> so Hertha Berlin how, what was it like living in Berlin and, and playing there did uh, you enjoy it, it it was good you know when I arrived there you know the, my trial was actually for for the reserve right for the reserve team so uh, I spent some time with the reserve like about six months yeah and I, I was doing well I've been yeah. given a chance with the first team and signed signed my professional contract there with the first team it was good I mean Bundesliga is a, it's a good league this is a good league a fantastic stadium and yeah for me, it was an experience going from nursing, suddenly you're in the Allianz Arena. You yeah. know, it was it was crazy. Yeah, and how did you find that step up when you were playing? Did you find it comfortable? Were, you know, was you thinking this is a level that I can easily play at or, or even go higher? Uh, at the start, I was a little bit overwhelmed, I would say. Right. You, know, you, you come, you play in front of uh, 100 to 500 people uh, with a reserve. And suddenly yeah. you're here, you, you're a little bit, you know, looking around like, oh, you know, uh, across you, you play. Uh, I was I was uh, sent to meet, so I'm playing against Michael Balak, and I'm like, oh, oh this, wow. you know, these different things. Yeah. You know, trying yeah. to do your best, but you, you're not ready mentally yeah. sometimes, yeah. you know, to... To, to to really be free and yeah. play, play as you want, you know. Yeah. So yeah. No, it was it was a process. It's amazing, isn't it? When you come up against players when you're young and you go, mm. oh, "Wow, I am miles off it." Like, yeah. like you saying about Michael yeah. Balak. When you come, yeah. yeah. I know, I know, but listen, we've all we've all got to where we wanted to get to, and we, we was all good. But you've always you, you always come up against. Someone. I remember coming up against Joe. Yeah. When we used to play West Ham in the academy, Joe Cole, and you just go, "Wow, like." Like he's destined for it, and I am just so far from that. Yeah, there's the one that stands out for me is when I was YTS at Saints, and do you remember I um Bergovic, this <sighs> little yeah. Israeli centre? Yeah, yeah. My, he came in and he looked about twelve. Yeah, but he was training with us, and I was just he was just on a different yeah. planet. Yeah, and I couldn't believe it. And the next day he wasn't in, and he was training with the first team. I can't remember how old he was, but they must have just been having a quick look at him to see yeah. what he was like. Mate, next day he was just for them, <laughs> and he was unbelievable. Like just a different, yeah, he was a top different player. level. It is mad. Top when you player. See the levels. Um, 
You left. You left Hertha, and you, you got invited yeah. by Mark Hughes for a, a five-day trial at, at Blackburn Rovers. Yeah. Um, how 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 did that come about? And what did you what did, what were your first feelings about coming to, to coming to England? Yeah, it was every time my dream to play against the Premier League. I don't know for what reason. When you look at the game on TV and it's the Premier League, it, it looks like different. You know, it's like when you look at a proper like Hollywood movies yeah, and then yeah. you look at the local production yeah, yeah. So that's the difference <laughs> you know. when he talks about that really like like you started at a young age and you go through the thing I started at probably 13 and yeah. you go through you could really when you look at it there is a movie in your life you know you were yeah. living on the sh on the streets you, the things you did yeah. I, can't, I can't what was that feeling like to get that opportunity she said you wanted to play in the Premier League like that feeling must have just been yeah yeah. I'm real yeah. from where we've come uh, from. Yeah, I'm actually like just going to sort of like a film kind of set now and just like yeah. that that scene where it's right, this is your this is your opportunity, this is your chance. Did you feel did you feel huge pressure yeah. on that trial or did you just go there with an open mind to go? Yeah, for sure, is. because but uh, like I say it was a process because my actual first professional game was in Sudan in the second division yeah. and uh I got a red card, so I didn't get many opportunity afterwards. My first game in... In your in first Pro game, you got a red card in your first red game? Red card. Oh, my, my first game, it's a loss. So you, you go down down the tunnel crying, uh, <laughs> maybe, you know, it's, it's, this yeah. is it. You know, I'm not going to get another chance. Yeah. Things didn't go well. Obviously, I broke my legs at some point, you know. So uh, you continue your journey. Then you arrive at Hertha Berlin. Hertha Berlin, another chance. Did better. So it's, it's a step up. So I yeah. did better than I did before. And I think when I arrived to England, I was just more ready, more, yeah. it was more determination. You're at Hertha Berlin, and then you get invited for a trial with Mark Hughes at Blackburn Rover in the Premier League. Yeah. Obviously, your journey from when you've moved home from 15 to your age, probably 19, 20 now, yeah. about a trial now to come to England, the best league in the world. How did you feel when that opportunity came around? Was uh, you nervous? Was you like, this? I have to grasp this? Or was you more open-minded? For, for me, like at any age and every time I say, I've I already, you know, had my rock bottom. Yeah. So I, I, what can I be scared about? Yeah. You know, nothing really. After it depends if I can, you know, seize the moment and, and perform at that time. But, you know, when I came to, to Blackburn, it was... Uh, uh, training with you know Benny McCarthy yeah. you know, and all this guy, two guy and yeah. you know quality player was 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 good. You know it's not something that I've not done before, but yeah. you need to impress again. Yeah. Uh, in in Atta Berlin when I came, it was impressing Marcelino, the Basture, yeah. these kind of players, and um, I think I did well. You know and. Uh, it was raining all the time. With me, <laughs> uh, uh, rain. Like, <laughs> All the time, non-stop. Did that, did that put you off at all? Was you thinking, no, oh, no. the football's great, but this weather? No, on, on the camera, when you looked at the TV, like on the TV and the, the Premier League, even when it rains, it's like the, the screen is shinier. You yeah. know? So it yeah. didn't matter. Uh, so uh, I, I was just, uh, went there, you know, did well in training. Obviously, it was a game at the end. You know, every time they want to see you in a game, so in in-house game. Yeah. We had a little in-house game and... Uh, uh, I think I was a little, I show a little bit too much determination because I, I ended up almost in, injured Martin Olsen. Young, Martin Olsen, yeah, 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 yeah. Like for three, four months, you know, tackled his, oh, wow. his, his leg a little yeah. bit too high. And, yeah. You know, he's been out for like three, four months. So when I come back, he's in the physio room. He's, he's like... <laughs> 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 well, I, had, I had that at Wolves. I had that at Wolves. I tackled yeah. their, uh, one of their midfielders. I can't remember his name now. And I, um, he had like a hairline fracture in his leg. Mm. And then I was going to sign for Wolves. And he, when I was doing my medical, he was in the gym yeah. doing his rehab. And yeah. I walked in like in the training kit and he looked at me and I was like, <laughs> it's just that horrible <laughs> glance. Over. Like, oh my God. I had a little bit with Sparky actually, Mark yeah. Hughes. I was 18. And the Saints got him for a season. And I'd give him a dead leg. <laughs> in, in he, oh, he had a set of legs as well. I know, yeah, yeah. I'd give him a dead leg. And I was like, oh, you know, I was 18, a bit shy. I felt yeah. so bad. Yeah. <laughs> did he, did he, did he, was he injured? Uh, he got injured for a little bit, but he wasn't oh, too bad. He, and he let me off for two weeks wages, fine. We talked about previous yeah, so he, he did yeah. obviously didn't hold it again. You to Mark, that's for sure. Um, look, I've just got to mention to, to viewers and people that are watching and listening, um, we do record this uh, in a pub in London. So if you can hear barrels being dropped... 
it's that time of day. So apologies <laughs> yeah. about that. Chris, you obviously left an impression on Mark because they signed you three and a half year deal, £450,000. Yeah. Uh, what was it like to, to, to sign that contract and then, and then be a Premier League player? I mean, that, that was you know, the start of a dream as well. Another dream, you yeah, know, because yeah. you had to go through different one, you achieve yeah. the first one, you go to, yeah. this, to the There's second stage. There's no resting place, is there? You're always nah. sh striving for more. Yeah, you, you, you need to because when I was in Hertha Berlin, I started to play, I started to have a taste of it, but then I didn't have the full confidence of the coach because I couldn't get two games in the trot. So for me, it was to go somewhere where I could put this, you mm. know, big sample of games and yeah. be considered as a regular player. Yeah. That's the next stage. And uh, Marcus gave me that. He gave me his confidence, you know. Uh, he told me, listen, you come here, you 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 train. I like, arrive in January. Look how is it going till yeah. the end of the season. You'll be ready for, for the season after. Yeah. And uh, at the weekend, he makes a team, and my team is in, my name is on the team sheet. And oh, I'm like, wow. whoa, whoa, what kind of joke yeah. is this? Like, yeah. That's a sick joke. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, yeah. they, he, made, he give you a mindset that you're going to be built in for the next yes. season, but straight away you're in the team. Straight away I was in the team. So he told me, don't worry, you'll have time to adapt and everything. So at the end of the week, I'm like, my name is on the team sheet against Sheffield United. And yeah. I'm like, uh, what's going on here? You know? You didn't need to adapt, mate. I'm telling you now. Anyone walking out on that pitch, centre forward, coming up against <laughs> you, yeah. they're trying to adapt yeah. to you. Even in the tunnel next year, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Intimidating is what it was, definitely. I was not at the start, you know. It, I had to work, you know, uh, in the gym. You know, at the start, I come and as uh, for me, like playing against. I remember John Steed was tough. Steed, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, was tough, big guy and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it, it was tough. But you know, the, what was important is after that win. You get the second game, yeah, and then the third game, and then you start to just feel right, just feel, feel normal, home, yeah. feel yeah. at home, yeah. And that's what, what what you need as a young player. You yeah. need to have good. So did you feel at home game. then? As soon as you, because a lot of people say yeah. that about Blackburn, it's, it's very like a, a family yeah. family club, and you felt at, at ease at home, so you could just play your football and just yeah, be, yeah, be it free. was fantastic, fantastic yeah. squad. You know, it was what I, was, I needed. You know, all the yeah. players, you know, men. Yeah, you know, men that can help you and show you as well the way, and guys like two guys, yeah. Ryan Nelson, all yeah. these guys, you know, uh, even Sav in some way, you know, Sav yeah, showed yeah, you that, yeah. that, that, that yeah. you know, it was a, it was a very workman like team. Everyone yeah. knew their yeah. roles. Everyone there yeah. was no egos there. No. Everyone just like cracked on. And um, mm. did you get into Europe as well? Was it was it, few, was it a couple of seasons before? Yeah, we we did. We so did. did, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Uh, we had a good season. I mean, we had a, a team of. Hard work, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Hard work was there, and a little bit of talent too, you know. Here and there, there was, a there was there was hard work, there was talent, and there was a little bit of nastiness. I yeah, sometimes yeah. you go up there, and it got nasty yeah. sometimes. Well, you remember your time at uh, Chelsea? Yeah, and nobody liked to come. Games. No. Nobody no. liked yeah. to come, and that's that what we wanted. We wanted yeah. that. Do you know the only thing I found with Ewood Park? It's so strange, and you get it when you play. I noticed when I was playing as well. When you actually watch a game, that far. Stand, yeah. A, they got a big concourse there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walk up and down like it's like it's a high street. <laughs> yeah, like mean. there's people walking up and down yeah. literally all game. I'm like sit in his chair. Yeah. Like, I get it. I get yeah. it. Like five minutes before half time, yeah. I get enough for a beer or I go for a pie. It's just people constantly yeah, like, yeah, like, waiting for someone to walk up and down with a dog. Like, yeah, I forgot what, about what's that. going on? Yeah. I always got to have that though. Yeah, Crazy. Um, yeah. Look, you've returned and done a bit of coaching as well at Blackburn. Yeah. What what? What is it about the place that obviously is so close to your heart because you had a great career, uh, spill of your career there, and obviously you've gone back then and, and tried a little bit of coaching as well. Why, why, why Blackburn? It's home, you know. That, that's, that's where they gave me really what what I needed, that confidence. You know, that's what you know when I come back to you know you come back and you think about all your career. That's a place that it really push you to what 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 you've been able to be. Yeah, you know, uh, what you've been remembered at. You know, so for me, it was all of that, you know, the dressing room, uh, yeah. you know, everybody at Blackburn come back at Blackburn at some point, yeah. you know, yeah. that's to show you how good, yeah, it's very true, yeah. good that, uh, how that group is, you know, sometimes yeah. I come back, I can see David Dunn, so you come back, I saw Pascal last time, you know, you yeah. come back, you, you see people come back, you know, because it's, as Martin, you know, everybody come back at yeah. some point. Yeah. You have that, that, that bond stage, you know, what we've done, and you, when you go back, you're like, was actually 
Bit times. Yeah. Better yeah. good time, better yeah. than here and there. So, you know, yeah. So. Amazing. Yeah, mm. great club. Great club. Look, talking of, of Blackburn and they're, they're striving to get into the Premier League. Look, we had the international break mm. um, last few weeks, uh, which was great. England, superb. What have you made of the, of the Premier League this year? Because it's, it's, we've had a lot of guests on, different yeah, opinions. How, yeah. how have you seen it, especially with, with Arsenal and Man City? No, it's uh, a league that's really cut in half, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you go, I think, from the 11 to the 12, I think it's 11 points or 10 mm. or 11 points, something yeah, like that. Right. So... Uh, it's been it's been crazy. I mean, it's, it's, it's been good because it's not going to... You can't call the results. Can yeah, you? No, it's yeah. not been like previous year when you know it's going to be like uh, the same. This is just the same all the time. The Man City, the Chelsea, yeah. the Man United, the Liverpool. It's been different. You see Chelsea has been struggling, whatever they're trying to do. Yeah. You know, you see Arsenal. Arsenal is, is, is back and is doing great, you know. And and uh, you see the relegation fight that is so tight. You know? It's crazy. I, yeah, I don't yeah. know how to call it. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can't yeah. call it. No, you, can't. Um, you said about Arsenal there. They're... Uh, they're, they're arch rivals, Spurs. They got Everton away on Monday night. Conte... As, uh, as as part of company with Spurs, Bridgie, did you see that one coming after his his outburst? There was there had to be a reaction, didn't there, from from Spurs? Yeah, there had to be. You just can't do that as a manager, can you? Really? It's, it's... I think we touched on it, didn't we? Like you understand what he's saying, yeah? Because he's 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 kind of saying, look, it's it's what Spurs have been like the yeah. last. 10, 15 years. Just Spursy, isn't they? Yeah. You just call those just yeah. Spursy. But, but I... he's got a lot of passion. Yeah. And he wants to win, but everyone wants to win. He does want to win, and he, he's got that much passion, you know. And he just he just let it out. Yeah, it's all come out. Um, he wants to win badly. I reckon when when I look at Spurs, I feel like it's the relationship between the manager and the board more than, and it's not them being on the same page or yeah. the board not being on the same page as the manager. And I think that's what ends up breaking down for them a lot. Yeah. Yeah, no, they, they they seem like they have to get top four this year. Obviously, with, with the training ground and the facilities. I was at Spurs actually on the weekend at the training ground. My my lad played Spurs under 18s and they 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 bought I think the golf course next door. They, they turned that into like an NFL um, facilities, and they've yeah. got England were, were training there and staying there. So I think they're trying to build it up as like a real package. Now, whether they're going to offload that down the line or not, I don't yeah. know. But um, it seems like top four is absolutely imperative for them. And, and it's going to be tough this season. Liverpool, Newcastle as well, that are in and around them. Do you, yeah. think, do you think they can squeeze into the top four? Stay there? Maybe they should have not spent so much money on that and spent it on some <laughs> players. They did back him, though. They, they People did. said they, that. They, 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 they did back they him. They backed him, but maybe it's the recruitment that hasn't been right. Yeah. Um, and some players have not performed, not right. have they? Son's not performed. No, Kulisevsky's not, not performed. And yeah, it, you, you can't put your, your finger on it. It's like... I speak to Spurs fans and you know they're just like, well, it's just Spurs, isn't it? It's what we do. Yeah. But it is that I think it's whoever they appoint next, it's I think it's got to be a long term thing, a bit like what Arteta has done at Arsenal, and just you've got to give them time, and you've you've got to be on the same page, and the board have got to be on the same page as the manager they bring in. The, well, look, we, we say about bringing someone in, Christian um, Stellini, he's been given the job to end of the season. Uh, he done well when Conte was was having his surgery. I think he was uh, Ryan Mason, who I actually listened to a podcast with him the other day, uh, was absolutely sensational. He comes across really, really well. Um, he'll, he's going to be involved. Uh, but after that, I mean, we've got some some names here. Poch, whether he's going to go back, which is Pochettino, Marco Silva at Firm, who's done really well. Stellini was going to be temporary charge. Is he going to be the permanent one? Deserve at Brighton. There's there's a yeah. lot of people mentioning him. Zidane. Uh I mean it's a they're a it's huge not, club, Spurs, aren't be, they? They've got they've got to It's not gonna be Zidane. It's not gonna be Zidane. Absolutely no chance. Oh, I, I can't imagine it being him. But Spurs, they, they they do get some out of the hat. You know, when Jose went in there, they can they mm. can pull a rabbit out of the hat. You think it would be more Zinedine I don't see turn it down. They've got to yeah. take their time in who they pick, haven't they? But a lot of people saying Pochettino that's gonna it's gonna go back. Fans would go love back. That, I think fans, fans would take they? it. Fans but then you're saying that they like, well, like every manager, they they always want them out towards mm. the end, and then they take them back after a while. It's, it's difficult because Poch, you know, has been there. He's done great things with the team. Yeah, you know, he, had, he looked like he had that great chem chemistry with the players. But the, the question is, you know, when things are broken down with him and the board, 
can you can you repair that really or you know, yeah, what would be yeah. the dynamic yeah you don't then, know how it's gone yeah, if you burnt bridges yeah, yeah. true don't the know how that was left manager who just got sacked yeah Nagelsmann um, yes Nagelsmann. yeah yeah yeah. Mm. he's another one who's obviously I like him he rides a skateboard I love, I love skateboarding <laughs> who would you have <laughs> but, but also he's young <laughs> <laughs> he's um <laughs> I do like a bit of skateboarding Best but he, the he's um he's <laughs> absolutely great he's <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> but he's young isn't he and it's like <laughs> I think maybe if the board can are on the same page as him and they create something more long term because I think they need it with Who the squad they for? got. If- if there's too there's there's too many to shoot. There's so many to shoot. If you're the Spurs from. owner now, who would you? Who would you, who would you <laughs> I'd <and> sell them. <laughs> um, uh, it's it's hard, isn't it? There's there's a few good out. It's what it's who can you get? Like you right. know, obviously he's available. Yeah. You know the people that are other clubs. Can they get the ones that are other clubs? But he's yeah. young, and I just think, you know, you look at what Arteta's done. And yeah. it's taken time. Yeah. It's made sure they're getting that right manager and having the trust in him. So they've got to take their time and who they pick. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, who would, mm. if, if you had to pick someone that's free or in a job I mean, at the moment, who do you, you think know, Spurs well, should go and. I mean, Nagelsmann is a good candidate. Yeah. You know, he's, he's done some good things, you know, obviously to her reputation, to her, I feel that he was sacked a little bit. Yeah. No, was unjustified. You know, yeah. you don't find another some manager, you don't find them around just, just like that. I think Bayern Munich felt like, oh, that's our chance to get to get him. Yeah. So they went and, and get him. But it was no was it real urgency for Bayern Munich to do that? They yeah, felt yeah. like yeah. yes. Yeah. But I think with Nagelsmann, he could come to Tottenham and the only problem is would they give him the time to, yeah. to build something? That, that's they've, only time. They've, they've got only to, time. they've got to. I, mean, it's, I think it'd be a good choice. Yeah. Just a quick one to, to um, finish on Spurs. Harry Kane, obviously broke the England record. You do feel as though if he doesn't move away from Spurs now, now it's, yeah. not gonna, no. it's not going to happen. Yeah. It's um, never really, isn't it? I suppose it all depends on who comes in as well, doesn't it? I suppose yeah. if they get a manager that comes mm. in and, and feeds him the dream... <laughs> Then he then he could stay, but it's, yeah, it is for him. It's now or never, like you said, it isn't, yeah. it, isn't it? Really, it's he's he's been, they've done well to keep him this long, I think. Yeah, but it looked well. I mean, there was so, talks at the beginning of the season was there that he handed in transfer place yeah. and tried to go um, maybe for the Man City one didn't materialise, yeah. but there is previous there. Look, Spurs are fifteen to eight to finish in the top four. Newcastle eleven to ten. Man United um, two to thirteen. So going to the other end. Of the league, huge game. West Ham, Southampton, Sunday, two p.m. Could this be pivotal? Because West Ham are in it as well. They're mm. they're 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 not doing great at all. Europe, yes, but the league form is not replicating that. It's a massive game, but I think there's loads of massive games coming up. Yeah, like there's loads. I was looking at who's got to play who down at the bottom. Then Palace have got to play eight of the teams down there. The bottom really? eight out of their last game. Oh, so it's in, yeah, so wow. You know, and West they are Ham, dropping like a stone. Yeah, and then you've got Bournemouth and Leeds who have got to play six. Yeah. Um, West Ham who are only playing five. And uh, then you've got Saints, Forest, and Everton who have only got four of them. I like so, you've done a bit of homework here, Bridget. <laughs> you know, like it, it's, eh? it's, it's in Palace's <laughs> hand. It's in Palace's yeah, hand. Yeah. It is a mass. These are massive games, but I just think there's going to be so much movement if you look at how many of them teams have got to play each other. Well, it's. But for me, West Ham, something's got to change. Yeah, it but has, can it? Once you, you because you know, like you've been in this situation before, where you, when you're you've got momentum and you're playing yeah. well, it's great. And you've got momentum right now, and man. it's going down. It's it's hard to yeah. stop, isn't it? Your Oprah isn't helping them either, to be honest. No. With the relegation battle. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't call it really. I think it's tough. That that that. You know, when I looked at it as well, they haven't con- they've conceded so much less than all the other teams. They've conceded a lot less than them, but they haven't scored many either. So they're yeah. not scoring. They've got to start scoring. Yeah. They haven't scored yeah. many. And Mo- look, Moyes has done well there. But you think, they've got some good players, technically yeah. gifted players. Yeah. Do they need a manager get- going to get them playing better football? Oh, it's so hard, isn't it? It's... Like West Ham four to one to go down. Southampton one to three on Bridgie. Um, <laughs> it's not looking good, but Leeds and Bournemouth seven to two and uh, five to eight respectively. Are you still saying Southampton and Leeds, and then dangling <sighs> on Bournemouth or Palace? You, you... 
Chris, who do you think? No, it's, it's, it's hard to call. I'd say Saints just because, you know, it's gone for a lot long. of my mates, mates are Saints fans and, you know, and the way it's gone, they've just been sat down there. They're not playing great. And, you know, even Ings, right? My dad said it as soon as Saints were him. Yeah, he's going to come back to haunt us. So you see him yeah, scoring at the weekend against them. So I think Saints, well, I don't want to, but like I said, like it's it's too hard to call. Yeah, it is tough. Yeah, it's, it's difficult, you know. And it, why is it hard? Is like at, at the moment, you know, you think, oh, South, you know, Saints buried, mm. and then you look at it and you're like, hold on, they just a win away from, from, it is, from going, it is, isn't it? going out from yeah, there. You know? They need then the win. You see Bournemouth, you're like, oh, they look like they'll be buried, yeah. and then they, they get the win against Liverpool. Yeah. That yeah, yeah, change yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. For me, it was like when I look at the gameplay, I'm like, Forest, not great. You know, they, they don't look like the strongest team, you know, in, in their football. And you look and suddenly they have a couple of wins that put them like three, four points away. So it's... Yeah. it's it, well, it is the tightest relegation battle in years, for sure. Yeah, and it is going to go good. down to the wire. It's I really do good. believe it. Yeah, it there's really so good, many that are involved. Definitely. I mean, mm -hmm. even West Ham, I think Wigan was probably one of the last teams that was in Europe and maybe got relegated. Was when they won the, they, the they were in the Wigan were in the championship, yeah. yeah, when they was playing in Europe. Yeah, they won, they got the That's right, Cup. FA Cup. Yeah. So, yeah, West Ham, there is, there is history there. Um, look, it's going to be tight. Uh, Bridgie sit on the fence again, so we'll go <laughs> on to next week. Um, now let's play the Virgin <laughs> Bet Builder game. Each week, our friends at Virgin <laughs> Bet have picked out a match for us to do five predictions. The match result, the correct score, and the first Goal scorer. We then have two mystery markets of their choosing. Each correct prediction um, will win you a point. The harder the prediction, the more the points. Just a reminder, if Bridgie beats our guests over the season, <laughs> I'm buying dinner. But if our guests beat Bridgie, then, um, then we can obviously come to some arrangement with Bridgie. <laughs> Last week, Clive come up trumps for me. Uh, beating Wayne 8-4. So the score at the moment is 15 points to Bridgie and nine to the guests. So, Chris, I need you, okay? Uh, the game this week is going to be Man City versus Liverpool at the Etihad. Man City, 4-7 on to win. The draw is 16-5, to five and Liverpool 17-4. to four. So, I'm going to get your predictions, please, lads. Uh, so, Chris, I'm going to go with you first. Can I have your first goal scorer? Who's going to win and what the score will be? I have a little hesitation be between either De Bruyne or Bernardo Silva. Oh. You know, both have been in good yeah, form recently. Yeah, yeah they picked up, yes. National team and, yeah, and club. Like so. thinking, like this. I'm on the same mm. wavelength here. <laughs> we need Thank this. You uh, we'll go, you know how we go? Bernardo Silva. Bernardo Silva yeah. to score first. First. And um, who will win? City. City, and yes. what score do you think? 3-1. 3-1. Okay, I like it. It's big against Liverpool. I'll but give you another chance against City this week. <laughs> Bridgie, come and give me a free. Um, I'm going to go for City win. Yep. Um, saying I was going to go De Bruyne, but do you know what? I think I might go Salah. I'm going to go with Salah. So Salah to score first, yeah. City to win. City to win, Salah to score first. And what's the score, please? 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Two, one. Yeah. Goal. You know what stands out for me, that Sulla goal against City, do you remember that? Did he get goal of the season for it? At Anfield, when he the cut corner, in and just, yeah. just like, just chop someone. So just, good, oh my it? God, what's a goal. So, so good. Um, right, the mystery markets this week. Total goals scored in the second half. Okay, is it going to be over 1.5 or under 1.5. You've both gone for goals, 2-1 and 3-1. So, uh, and total cards in the game, over 2.5 or under 2.5? So, Bridget, I'll go to you first because Chris went first last time. Uh, so, total goals in the second half. Yes, yeah, all coming in the second half for me. So, over 1.5. Over 1.5. Over over, going over. And total cards in the game, over or under 2.5? Uh, it's got to be over. You think so? Yeah, it's got to be with these yeah. two. He took my prediction. Well, Mate, you, you can, can copy it. You can, can copy it, you can copy it. No, if you want. You can copy you can it. Go the same. I believe it's going to be both over. Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Yes. Okay, so 
You sure? All good? Uh, yeah, I'm going over, right. over, yeah. That's good. Well, there's our predictions. If you want to build a bet, just download the Virgin Bet app and head over to Bet Builder. Please visit Virgin Bet for full terms and conditions. You have to be over 18 to play. Please, please gamble responsibly. Uh, look, Chris, we've got to go on managers. We had uh, Charlie on a couple of weeks back and it was loads of fun talking about previous managers. Um, we've got to start with two of, of ones that have been uh, very prolific in, in your career. Mark Hughes and Sam Allardyce. We've all played for Mark Hughes on, on this yeah, table. Right. We've all got good stories about him. Tell me why he was he was so good and, and, and why you hold him in high esteem. Um, you every time gonna keep you know, the managers that give you your truly like the confidence and your chance in, in <coughs> your heart, you know, and he, he has that that calm about him. You know, yeah. he's not someone that talk too much. You know, yeah. he don't. He's not the loudest. He don't talk too much. And I think he understand. He understood me. He understood if if I make a mistake, it's, yeah. it's not because I have been silly. It's because I made a mistake. So yeah. I would nev never, never. Um, you know, hold it over my head. He knew that I was disappointed in myself and I would do better. Um, and he, he trusted me. S simply as that, he trusted me. Yeah. So it's so easy to to play for a manager that, tr that, that gives you that trust. Yeah, that's massive, that, isn't it? When you've got a manager that just knows what you need, yeah. doesn't have to, you know, you can you can probably go Monday to Friday and not really speak to him, knowing that it's not going to affect me. But, yeah. you know, if he's got the trust in me, you can go on a Saturday and perform or, or a midweek and, and it just, Yeah, it just helps if, if they've got that belief in you. It, it, it helps massively. Yeah. And it, it's... I'm trying, the only... The ones that really stand out for me were probably Dave Jones because he gave me my chance so he believed yeah. in me. And then... Glenn Hoddle was probably the massive standout because he, he had so much belief in me and I didn't realise till after my career, because he was very much into the psychological part of the game. Yeah, yeah. I didn't find out till I went to a dinner, and someone asked him a question about me. And he said, "I, what I did with Wayne is I knew he didn't, he didn't believe in himself as much as I believed in what he was capable of. Yeah. And I don't think he had the confidence. So I made sure that all the players around him kept building that up." Really? in him to make sure he knew how so good he was yeah, how good's that? which for That's me manager, probably had the it? most impact in my yeah. career um, but obviously I, pl I played under Sparky but at a later date what I noticed about Sparky was his training yeah. I really enjoyed yeah, his training yeah, he had good, good wasn't it like, yeah, it was good sharp Eddie Ned, Eddie, Eddie Ned was there with oh, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I loved yeah, that. So, 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 so Mark Hughes yeah. Bowen, Mark Bowen, Bowen yeah, and Eddie Ned the, the, yeah. the three yeah. of them they, they, and it works so well, doesn't it? It works, it works Good cool, cop, yeah. bad cop. Eddie's in between, yeah. mm -hmm. flowing about, taking the sessions. Even the ones that are on a Sunday, the bomb squad, there's like two or yeah. three there yeah. that don't want to train. He gets them up, he gets them going. It, they, it really works well, doesn't it? That, yeah, that, that, it works. They have a good dynamic working together. You know, Bowie is more the more vocal one. Yeah. You know, Eddie sometimes is the one who gives you that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> I always have a good laugh. Yeah, yeah, like it. He's laugh. finger. He's, yeah. he's, uh, he's, he's, <laughs> he's that dodgy he's, finger. People that don't know Eddie. Eddie, <laughs> yeah, Eddie. Eddie. <laughs> he was a goalkeeper back in the day me, yeah. and he's he's got a knuckle that basically <laughs> points to three o'clock. <laughs> you can imagine that. Um, was you captain under Mark Hughes or was that mm, Sam no. that, that no, put you I, captain I think Blackman? For me, they were both important, like I say, because Mark Hughes gives you that one yeah. thing that you need. Yeah. And then I arrived to a different stage where actually Sam made me more of a leader. Yeah. Like make me take more responsibility. And obviously he still has that belief, you yeah. know, that I could really help the team. So whatever he needed, I'll go up front. I'll go up front, you know, <laughs> play there, he plays there, you know. And Can you remember the conversation that you had with Sam when he gave you the captaincy like yeah. in terms of what he wanted you to do, or was it very much for, for, for me was was a, a a delicate situation because obviously I've been, you know, Growing through the team, you know, following Ryan Nelson, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and he's the respected guys, great there, pro, you know, the great pro, yeah. and everything. And when he come and he say, "Oh yeah, you're gonna be captain now," I'm like, "No, no," <laughs> I'm like, "No, I have touched that." Like, "No, no, it's, it's not possible, captain." Just out of respect, yeah, yeah out of respect. I'm like, "No, no chance," you know. He say, "No, no, no," because obviously Ryan was in a, in a stage where he's not gonna play every game now yeah. and everything, so. Uh, and also, I, I, I feel that he felt that I had a good 
chemistry, you know, you see a dressing room, you have a clan here, a clan there, you know, sometime and it goes to dressing rooms together, but you still have like little groups, you know. And um, he, he probably felt that I had a good chemistry with anyone, yeah. you know, in the dressing room. And and I was playing my uh, some of my best football at the time, so yeah. he, he, he felt like, you know, it's your time now to to lead. You, you've learned through through Ryan, you know, take, take the reins. So I had to have, have a discussion with, mm. with Ryan, actually. Like, listen, Ryan, you know me. I'm not going to go and, and try to take your spot and everything. I'm, everybody's happy with what you're doing, but... You know, I don't want to take it. And it's him who say, no, no, he, you know, it's, it's your time now, you know, take it. And, you know, he st st you steal the, he steals the club, club captain yeah. when he come to come on. But he the would have respected that so much as well. Were you having that conversation with him? Yeah. Goes two ways, isn't it? Oh, yeah. 100%. Goes two yeah. Give me his benediction. Yeah. yeah. What, was, what was Big Sam like tactically in the game and training? Because for me, when I have Big Sam... Did you see be great for team spirit? You know, that, that's the thing. You know, the people think that Big Sam will come and it's so simplistic. Mm. It's more simplified. Yeah, yeah. But I'm telling you, you know, he study all the weak points and where yeah. we're going to attack. And, you know, yeah. in a game against United, if you see Santa Cruz on the left wing, it's because, you know, you have Patrice yeah. and he can attack it there. Yeah. Yeah. Even Patrice is not bad in the air, but when you're Santa Cruz, is six foot five, you know, yeah. a big unit. And, you know, so every, every little thing like this is going to pit. You know, he, he, we're gonna pinpoint them yeah. out, yeah. and you know, video for him was a big thing. You yeah. know, we were yeah. working on weak, weakness on how we can exploit any team. He doesn't get enough credit for that. I've heard no. that from a few yeah. players yeah. on on stats and numbers and mm -hmm. um, analysts. He's he's very 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 good in that field. Um, someone actually, I think I have done my coaching badge with Kev Nolan. I think when they was at Bolton, because he used to know. We've all been there when you sit yeah. through team meetings and. You're watching a game of, of, of preparation for a game, and they'd be sitting there. I guess about that five six minutes in, we sort of like go, oh, which is a little bit boring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he said once, like a clown, like a clown just jumped out on screen, <laughs> like during the game, like he just froze to like a really scary clown. And everyone's like that to, to bring him back in the room. Yeah, you know what I mean? like, he, put, so he put that. He put that. He put that that's that's purposely brilliant. in, that's in the video mm. to bring everyone back in the room because he knows that the attention span goes yeah. off there. Where obviously he's learnt that on no. on his coaching on his coaching mm. style down the road. Um, but yeah, Sam, Sam definitely. Uh, and then Harry, Harry yeah. Redknapp at, at, at QPR, with different <laughs> different circumstances with Harry because QPR and the team. And a lot of money was spent there. Did you see the, the real side of, of Harry Redknapp? And it, it was different, you know. Obviously, for me, the dynamic of that move was not right. You know, I became, a, at such a time, you know, I was in, I was in Russia. We're going to go on to Russia. You know, so yeah. we, we'll, do, we'll do that story. Well, but just talk to us about, about QPR. Because I know you were saying it, that you it, had to get out and, and come back. So, but for, the move wasn't right? It wasn't right for me. It wasn't right, for, right. Example, for fitness reason. You know, yeah. uh, when when you come back to to the Premier League, you, you know how fit you have to yeah. be. Mm. Been out two months, you know, because you <laughs> almost two months because you're on holiday. Because normally in Russia, it was that move was decided last day. You know, last 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 day of the transfer window. What to come back? To come back. Wow. To come back. So I wanted to come back. Obviously, yeah. who, who don't want to come back? You know. Uh, so I, I I came back and. I thought my, my thought process like I'm gonna have time to mm. you know trim down you know yeah again no you know on the weekend I was I straight was in. But he asked me the question like you know how do you feel twenty percent and he said twenty percent of of me is better than hundred percent than others well. He was uh, right, but a lot of wrong too. <laughs> a lot of wrong too, you know. Me with 10 extra kilogram uh, yeah. won't, won't help you much, you know, especially where I was playing. My, my playing weight was like between 96 and 100. It's already yeah. heavy, you know. So you had to that. I was struggling, I was struggling. And then, you know, you're not prepared. Then injuries, injuries, injuries. And you don't what, have, you can't perform the way. there at the time? Class there were some big players, players there, we, weren't we they? Had big, yeah. we, had, we had good, good players. I mean, you, you, I don't know if you, you played with Jose. You know, yeah. So Jose was there, uh, was uh, Loic Remy that was doing well. Yeah. Esteban Who, Granero. Yeah. You know, Who was the goalkeeper? Uh, Cesar? Uh, we have, yeah. Julio, Julio Cesar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we, we, we had players there, you know, but the chemistry fell wrong. And, and this, I, I think, was a lot of resentment in the dressing room because of the, the I would say the, the weight structure 
You right. know, you have a, yeah. a guy here, here, a guy that there, a guy, you, you know, and he's trying to get here. You don't play your best, you know, he's asking questions, what, you know. Yeah. So it, was, it was a strange dynamic, very yeah. strange, yeah. you know, and I arrived with a big spirit, you know, my big spirit, and I want to raise a troop. And, you know, uh, it's the first time, you know, in, in, in a football team where, you know, he actually got the best of me. The mm. situation room already, like, eroded me slowly, yeah, slowly, yeah. slowly yeah. and slowly till, you know, you grate it to the, to the, to the book, you, yeah. you know. Did, did you, was it, was it, did it get to a point where you found it hard to go in every day because oh, it, it was, was just a toxic environment where you drive through the gates and it's like. Yeah. It, it was, it was difficult, you know, it was a difficult time, you know, we were going to the stadium and you didn't have even felt like real belief even from the crowd, yeah. you know, out there. You know, if you, 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 I lost, we lost a game, like, we were losing a game, I remember, in Man United, it's one nil, but we got chances. But you don't feel the, you know, the crowd, the crowd yeah. behind you. You just go out like to a game and you feel like you already and, lost. Yeah. It, it was, it was just a hot environment, hot. It was, yeah. it was hard. And that obviously didn't help seeing the best of probably Harry because Harry has mm. produced the goods at, at many clubs and a lot of people speak very, very highly of him, but even he says that, environment around there was was very difficult it's very it's difficult massive as well when you're yeah, in a relegation yes. battle but i was there with saints like <clears throat> yeah but i think we 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 always thought there was a chance we'd get out of it but if you don't have that yeah. then you're out you're out you, you're done in i you? suppose i think their big downfall qpr that one was when the, the players that signed there on on, on them contracts i yeah. don't i don't think that there was probably relegation Drop, you know, like it was in their money. If they got relegated, their money dropped down. I think they were all probably stayed on on the same. And uh, my contract was yeah. like that. Yeah, you know. So, but I wanted to leave because it didn't feel right. I was like, I ain't going to be the talk of the town because my salary yeah. is this, and I'm yeah. playing in championship. Can't do that. So I got to go. You have to find a solution. I've got to go. You know, this this is not for so me. So you so you decided to leave QPR because your contract was too high too to high, be in the championship. And you don't want to be the scapegoat and have the the. I, I I don't want none of that. That's amazing. I don't want none of that. So it's not yeah. me players that will no, say that. No, is there, Bridget? No, I'll be no, that's uh, phenomenal. Living a good life and we struggling at the club. That's no, yeah. no, no, it. Yeah. Ship, ship me back to Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I want to go on to Russia because we, we have a little segment about what really happened and we, mm. we want to divulge in, in a part of your career and that, that was obviously a, a big segment there. And, yeah. you know, you, you left Blackburn, you went to Russia. Um, there's been huge names have been there as well. Mm. Samuel Eto'o is a good friend of yours, Roberto Carlos. Um, Hiddink was, was the club manager. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Talk us about the whole process of... of Going to Russia, why you went to Russia, and and how it was for you there? For me, you know, arriving in in Blackburn, and for me, it was like the next stage again. I seen, uh, I've seen player go, David Bentley go to mm. Tottenham, Stephen Warnock yeah. have his move to yeah. to Aston Villa. You know, uh, a player was starting to leave. You know, Phil Jones now go to Man United, and I felt that's my time now yeah. uh, to to try to to leave for really the challenge of my life now. To try to play even the Champions League if I can. Yeah. So I had um, there was a discussion going on with with, with Arsenal, you know, and uh, obviously he broke down at some point. Right, you know, obviously there's a chance you could have signed for Arsenal. But yeah, it was discussion with with uh, with also with Tottenham, you know, and wow. you know it never happened because yeah. at the time paying 17 million for a central defender was probably too much. Yeah. Oh, unless you're real. Unless you're <laughs> you know? Harry Maguire. Uh, oh. Harry Maguire. <laughs> I'm not going to come back uh, to, to this, but uh, it, was, it was a lot of money at the time yeah. for a central defender. And um, they probably thought that it was too high, the mm. valuation, so everything broke down. I remember even Aston Villa coming in and being interested, you know, to, to bring me in with some crazy deal in, in, involving uh, John, is it, uh, Collins, yeah. Oh, James, James Collins, Collins. James yeah, Collins yeah, yeah. Back. yeah. Some, some, some. He, they were trying, you know. They, they were, and when I uh, felt like I'm starting that season, and all my crew is gone now. Yeah, you know. I mean, you're in the dressing room, and you're like, man, all my, all my guys are gone. You know. They, yeah. I'm one of the only one with three, four. You know, this is my time. I, I got to go. You know, I this, to get out. This is not. This you have to go to the next things now. This is no more your. You know, your, your, your time at the club, it was time for me, I felt it was time for me to go. When this didn't work, then 
I didn't really know what to do, so I started to play, but you don't feel good anymore. You know, uh, mm. we lost a lot of quality. We lost good manager. We were under Steve Keen. We yeah. had a terrible yeah. time, you know. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, I have to get out <coughs> of here. You know, I have yeah. to get out of here, but we need to find someone that is, is willing to pay. Yeah, and Russia want. was was yeah. the destination. There wasn't many, it was that really the only option? Was it Russia? Was no, it more? No. They they called me at the start. They called me at the start, and I'm like, no way. <laughs> I don't know where Anzi is. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> going. You know, and then uh, you type a little bit Anzi, and you yeah. see like it's like hot zone. You know, it's not like yeah. You know, and the living in Moscow, traveling to 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 the game, two hours flight and everything, and then I just. Got a call from 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 Samuel, say, oh listen, dear brother, hey, listen, come come help us out. You know we have a project that is is mm. this. We're gonna bring like players through. You know, last year I came after William came. You know, and they, they were starting to, the best Russian national team player was in the team and starting to build something something real. So uh, I was like, you know what, and. Let's not lie, you know, the money was good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I was... That always helps. Yeah. Oh, always especially, helps. If you're going to, especially if you're going to <laughs> Russia. 100%. Your <laughs> yeah. money's yeah. got to be part of it, I yeah. think, definitely. Yeah. So I said, you know what? Let's give it a go. Yeah. 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 Let's give it a go. So I decided, let's see let's see what, what what's going on over there. And um, you're going to... No, I was, I was going to say, what, what, what was it like there then yeah. when you first got there? Cold. I, I thought rain was the worst. So you gone from Blackburn to Russia? <laughs> I've never seen cold like that. I mean, really, and it's it cold up there. Yeah. Snow, <laughs> like you have that that much snow till April. You know, yeah. it's not. This is no joke. Yeah. This is no joke. What uh, we're talking about? Minus like oh yeah, 10, 15. 15, 10, 15 yeah. <sighs> Jesus. Temperature. Remember, you go to the game. You have a hot patch, hot patch, hot patch, hot <laughs> patch. Put hot patch everywhere. Then you put the the tights on. It, yeah, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. And like when the, you you obviously think they're going to build that team up, and yeah. is and and was that and did it kind of just go south and that wasn't happening? No, at the start it was happening. Yeah. Actually, it was happening. You know, uh, we saw the team. You know, obviously, you know, they brought Kusi D, yeah. who is also one of a great coach. By the yeah, way. yeah, he's a great coach. You know, so calm. He's like, I've never heard someone say I don't like Kusi D. Yeah, yeah, never. Chelsea lads loved him. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's, absolutely loved him. He's he's brilliant. Yeah, he's brilliant. So we, we were starting to do that, you know. We started to see Anzi in uh, Europe against Liverpool and, you yeah. know, starting to play Newcastle and, you know, it was taking form, you know. And uh, I think after a couple of years, you know, at my return from QPR, I think the owner had some, some, um, some issues. Yeah. Some issues. I think it was health, but I think it was also other, other stuff that don't concern me really. Um, and from that, he decided to, to, to drop Drop the project, so we mm. had we had to to leave, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So, looking back on your time in Russia, it was good. Was it you? You? you it was a positive. There was because there was a lot of people that go there, and, and racism is is possibly a part. But obviously, you had there something yeah. that you'd have spoken to beforehand and yeah. gone, look, you know, what's it like day to day, and mm -hmm. not only just football, it's about general no, living. I'm, there as well. I'm the, I'm the, we were living in Moscow, so yeah. we were living in Moscow, so that was yeah. was yeah. good, and. You cannot complain to 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 go to the game, you know, in a first class plane. You know, it's not like you you are like in first yeah. class plane. You don't see the time. You, know? yeah. you go, you play your game. Yeah, you're back in Moscow. That's what, basically what it was, and it was fantastic people. You know, you, you enjoyed surprised. Moscow. Yeah. yeah, we had like a, that close group. You know, where where we couldn't speak uh, sometimes, but we were laughing. Yeah, you know, we had a great time. So it was funny. We can't really speak. You know. But so the, like, the majority of players lived in Moscow and just travelled out yeah. to the games. All of them. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what? It, it reminds me of Gus Boy. He had a stint at Sunderland, didn't he? Yeah. Mm. He said, I was half oh, thinking, we need to move Sunderland down to London. <laughs> <laughs> and then we fly up there for the games. <laughs> I remember him saying that to me. Or just get all the, <laughs> just get all the boys down there. <laughs> yeah. Live down there. Live in and London. You attract some more players and then we just fly up for the games. Every, it's true though, isn't it? And then it? we'll Believe probably me, have more, home game, more away games. We feel like home. Type yeah. Thing, yeah. It, was, it was so good that, the, you know, super, I'm telling you that when the, 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 the president came and announced that things are going to change and, you know, we're going to have to leave. You see player crying. Wow. Yeah, yeah he was really that's good. Getting, that's because the wages are being taken away. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Don't be afraid <laughs> to say it. I'd cry bit. as well. I'd definitely cry as well. That was like Scolari said to me when I left. Well, I tried to really, really sad. Scolari went to me when I left Chelsea. They offering you more money. Yeah, you might as well go then. Oh, Man City. No, when I was at Chelsea... Yeah. I went to see Scolari, yeah, when I went to City. Yeah. Um, I just went to Scolari and said, uh, it's a man sitting here, what do you think? And he went, are they offering you more money? I went, yeah. He went, we might as well go there. <laughs> <laughs> so you win. Yeah. Don't blame you. Don't blame you. Look, amazing yeah. story. Um, last little bit before we go, just some quick fire questions just for yourself. Uh, the favourite game that you played in? Oof. That's a hard one. A favourite game that you played in could be anything for any any specific reason. Maybe you've scored or atmosphere uh, or first Premier League game for Blackburn. Uh, I would say probably first goal in professional football. Yeah, it's always nice. That, West Ham against West Ham. West Ham as well. West Ham was was just a feeling. You know, yeah, yeah. Scoring the goal. It's crazy. The isn't it? Yeah, it's Do you know what you can't. You just can't, re- I mean, you can replicate it because it's like when you scored a goal on the playing field yeah. with your friends or in the street or in, no. sc- in school. Yeah. It's like that, but just times. Time, yeah. Like yeah. a like million, isn't was. it? It's just incredible. And I guess your next goal is never going to compete with that. No, no Unless never. it's a cup final or, or yeah. something like that. Oh, the, first, the first one, the first goal was like the feeling. It's just, just the highest, it is, isn't it? Just, yeah. Explosion. It's an out of body experience. Yeah. I don't know what to do. Who's yours I against? feel I just jumped up and down on the spot. <laughs> Who's yours uh, Wimbledon, they went down. At, yeah, it's the last game of the season. Sellers, Saints, was, was no, at, at the Dell. At the Dell. Yeah, free oh. kick. Um, my first one was I was on loan for Brentford from Arsenal, and it was against Blackpool, half volley outside the box. You scored Winner. some decent goals yeah, as well. Yeah, you yeah, had. It was a little techers that one. It was nice. <laughs> um, favorite stadium? You played a lot. Been around the world. Ooh. It's, it's not especially the most beautiful one that are yeah. the best. I still say Anfield. Yeah. Anfield, yeah. Anfield special. Yeah. It's, it's the crew aren't happy with that. They're not, they, we've had the debate it's on here. They're, 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 they're not having the atmosphere. I'm sorry, guys. No. Anfield, it's... It's the never walk alone when they sing that. It's special. It's the first time you come yeah. in and you actually what experience you it. You're like, goosebumps. My favourite stadium, believe it or not, was White Hart Lane. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, I had a good record there and um, I loved it. I loved it. And Joe, you know what done with the new tunnel as well, the new stadium. If you're in the tunnel at the new stadium, when you before you walk out, it's exactly they replicate it exactly the same as White Hart Lane. Okay. Right. So yeah, like I'm yeah. talking like not near the dressing rooms because that's obviously yeah. modern. But when you're about ten yards down the tunnel, it's exactly the same as looking yeah. out at White Hart Lane. I like our old school stadium. I mean, Anfield, Goodison Park, White Hart Lane was good too. Yeah, you know, Goodison Park was horrible. To go oh, to. Yeah. Was yeah, but the atmosphere was. Oh, know, the atmosphere. It'd be great if you're never a player. If you're a better yeah. player, like so yeah. this, this was Dale. good. Your favourite ground? It's really hard because there's loads of nice ones in yeah. there, but I think probably for me would have been the Dell because I'd supported Saints the all my life. The pitch was always nice there as well. The pitch was it? nice, pitch was always great, and I don't think a lot of people liked going there. It's one of them, you know, it's, it's fans are in tight, and I think it got us out, it yeah. got us through, like, the, you know, the relegation battle we were in. I think yeah. the fans mm-hmm. definitely helped, and it wasn't. It wasn't an easy place to go to, yeah. but it helped us a bit, I think. That, so. <laughs> I, you know I what? Let me mention yeah. Napoli. Oh, Napoli. Oh, that's big. From the Gonzalo Higuain Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. Atmosphere. Yeah. I played there. It's, that's, it's that's amazing. Cool. We've gone from the Dell to Napoli. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to say a quick story on the, uh, on, on the Dell. When I was at Arsenal, I, we had a reserve game at the Dell, and Martin Keown was come back from injury or he weren't playing and he had to play. So we turn up at the Dell, there's not many people there. So we've gone out to warm up and uh, it's quite tight at the Dell, isn't it? And when yeah. there's not many people there, when someone shouts, it echoes around. Yeah. <laughs> so then we run out. So one of the fans of Southampton <laughs> shouted out, Oi, Keown, who run you over? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, I love him. He's a great lad. That's brilliant. He, he turned around, right? He gave this snarl. He, <laughs> typical Martin. He was brilliant. He's brilliant. I love I was it. only about 17, 18 at the time. I was like, oh, God, he's not going to like did that. Did you laugh, though? Oh, I did, yeah. A um, couple, of, couple of last questions. Uh, who is the GOAT, in your opinion? Who is your GOAT? Ooh, everybody wants to say Messi. Well, you know... Anyone, uh, going back. 
Oof. It's hard, you know. Big Ronaldinho was special. Oh, yeah, it's a big name, Ronaldinho, that. Ronaldinho, Ronaldinho. Massive, Big yeah. Zidane. Yeah. Yeah. Something. Zidane yeah. yeah. It was poetry, Zidane. Yeah. Zidane, Zidane played with just grace. Messi, again, a different style. Not a lot about Messi. He hasn't changed his position or the way he plays. He's just yeah. mm. always in. He's always yeah. in him when you compare yeah. him to Ronaldo. Yeah. Ronaldo's Who gave you the, the most bit. magic in football? But after you say he's a goat, I have to give it to Messi because of yeah. the numbers. Not Matt Letiz, no. <laughs> Matt Letiz. <laughs> Diego Maradona was me growing up. Yeah. But I loved him. Yeah, yeah mine was R9. He was R9 I as well. I, mean, I loved him. To mention. Yeah. I loved him, yeah. Different position. Yeah. But yeah. It shouldn't be a good conversation. No. I know. Should be like the best central defender or the best midfielder. Yeah, go. It's, t- it's hard, isn't it? Can't. He was a great centre half, uh, was right. a colossal <laughs> centre half. Um, who was your toughest opponent? You know what? Never enjoyed played against Berbatov. Berber. Play with Berber I don't know Fulham. why. Because he's normally place. big body, yeah. no problem. He's, he's wiry though. He's strong, he's, isn't he? I don't know. I, I couldn't I feel figure like, him out properly. You know, he's got he, great touch. I feel like oh, he's got that touch. midfielder style about him sometimes. Where you know when you get the midfielders where they can just get their body in between the ball yeah. and you and you yeah. can't get it. Yeah. I feel yeah. like he had that in the locker. Yeah. And he's like you said, his touch is unreal. Yeah, it's like if he walked like, on snow, would like, he would not leave a footprint. <laughs> <laughs> he would not leave a footprint that fella. Choose, yeah. so go play drug bar or play bar, but I'll go play drug bar. Yeah. Every, yeah. Week, every, really? every weekend. Because yeah. you want that confrontation. Yeah, you want confrontation the, before yeah. him, he was like, he was strong, but he didn't need to use it yeah. really. He was using yeah. his other things. He was, you know, his, his movement, you know, his technique. Yeah. He, he was one of the only guys where that back to the goal, I could actually see the ball. Yeah, you know, yeah. he was so good using his body. I couldn't Love figure that. him out. At worst game against Berbatov. Yeah. All the time. Great guy as well, Berber. We've got to try and get him on the pod. He's, he's um, a real nice fella. Um, Chris, look, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, to have you on. The journey that you've been on, um, it just goes to show for people that are listening and aspiring to be a footballer, it's not all plain sailing. Everyone has as ups and downs and you've certainly had, had the downs um, but you've picked yourself up and you've, you've carried on and it's been a, it's been a pleasure just to speak to you and, and get your, get your story. Thank so you for having thank me. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, man. Remember to find us on the Joe YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcast from. You have been watching All to Play For brought to you by Joe and Virgin Bet. We'll see you next time. You've been watching All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Virgin Bet.